This video goes over how to do local development with single spa, micro front ends, in browser, ES modules, and import maps. This is part of the single spa core team's recommended setup, and there are two videos that you should watch before this video if you haven't already. The first one is in browser modules versus build time modules, and the second one is import maps. Okay, so let's dive in to local development. The very first question to ask with local development and micro front ends is, should we boot up all of the micro front ends or just the one that we're working on? So let's say that you have a big team with 20 developers. Let's say that there are 10 micro front ends that they manage. That would mean 10 Git repos, 10 webpack configs, 10 CI processes, 10 npm start. So for local development, booting up all 10 would mean npm install and npm start 10 times in 10 tabs. Uh, that's a pain. Um, additionally, you're going to have to be git pulling a lot in order to make sure that your code is always up to date. And it's also sort of a pain just because some developers don't even work on the same stuff as the other developers, like not even the same projects, not the same teams. And so why are they having to constantly, you know, deal with like your thing is broken? Like, why do I have to pull, reinstall, keep things up to date? It becomes a lot to manage when you have 10 repos uh, that all of your developers have to have to keep going. And so this video shows a different way a better way of doing local development. I'd encourage you to push for this within your own organization. It requires a bit of upfront work, but it's worth it. Um, there are two steps to this way. So the first step is you must have a deployed test environment. The deployed test environment is not your local host. You know, it's a different URL and it has your backend and your front end running. The second step is to use a library called import map overrides. So let me show you how you can use that. So here's the HTML file for this page that we're looking at. We have a script in our HTML file that points to import map overrides. You can load it from CDN or from your node modules, however you want. Um, you actually have to put this script in a particular place. It must be after your main import map, but before any system.imports. It's very important. Okay. So now that you've installed it, what does it even do? So import map overrides provides you a UI that shows you all of the modules that you have. These are your in browser modules, shows you all the modules that you have, lets you click on one that you want to override. And then it lets you change the URL for that particular in browser module. So you'll see I clicked on the login module. And it's coming from this DigitalOcean CDN. I want to change that to point to my local host. So I can do localhost 8080 openMRS ESM login. Um, I could also do without the HTTPS, just the double slash would assume the same. Or a little bit of sugar for you. You can just type in a port and it will assume. A default URL. You can even configure what the default URL is for a port. So let's see. I let's say I want to run ESM login on port 8080. And now this website, which is not my local host, is going to load ESM login from my local host. And this is actually, this is completely allowed. Browsers are okay with this. Everything's okay with this. It completely works. This is how you do local development. So now notice we've got login here, which is overridden. React and React DOM, I'm using development versions of them, which is why they're red. 
And then all the rest of the modules are actually using the deployed version of those modules. So ESM API is coming from the default CDN. Dev tools, same air handling home, everything's coming from that. So this is how you do local development. You get that test environment, you install import map overrides, then you start clicking in this UI. This UI actually comes with the import map overrides library. You can use it, um, but it's built for you. Okay, so now let's let's show it in action. Made some big promises here about running things on localhost. So here I haven't reloaded the page yet. So this is um, we've got ESM login is coming from DigitalOceanSpaces.com. Now that I refresh the page, now you'll see it's coming from localhost. So import map overrides has done its job. It is now loading ESM login from localhost. Switch over to the code. Here is ESM login running locally. So what I did is I did npm start. It booted up a Webpack dev server on localhost. And here we are. So when I am in the browser, it is loading from that local server. Now let's make a change. I'm going to change the background color of the login container to cornflower blue. It'll reload the page. Here we are, cornflower blue. This is how you do local development. So you write some code. Um, let's go to lawn green. Save it, refresh the page, here we are. Um, you can set up hot reloading if you'd like. Um, that is done the normal way through Webpack and is not relevant for the import map overrides or anything like that. It's That's just a thing that you can set up on your own. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so this is what local development looks like when you've got 10 micro front ends is you only override the one that you care about. You leave everything else the same. You're using the deployed environment and um, you're good to go. You can override more than one at a time if you want. I'm gonna get rid of that because that green is really bright. <coughs> um, you can override more than one module at a time if you want, or you can do just one at a time. Micro front ends really works best when you're only overriding one at a time or maybe two. If you're overriding five or six or ten at a time, then that's problematic. Um, you're again, it's just causing a lot of work for your developers and overhead. Okay, to wrap things up here, I'm going to go over how does this actually work. So when you click around in this UI, or when you use, there's also a JavaScript API that it's a global variable called import map overrides. So when you use the JavaScript API or you use the UI, what it's doing is it's actually manipulating local storage. So you'll see here in local storage that we have some import map override keys with some values that are the URLs. What import map overrides does is it checks local storage when the page is loading and it injects a new import map in addition to the one that you already have being loaded in the HTML. It injects a new import map. That new import map has these URLs for these modules. Very quickly, I'll show you what, um, like what that is inside of the DOM. So here's the main import map. Here is the import map overrides import map is directly after the main import map so that it overrides it. Uh, being later on in the DOM means that it overrides. And here you'll see, um, here is my ESM login comes from localhost 8080. So that's how it works. I'd encourage you to really try for um, this workflow as opposed to having to boot up all of your micro front ends. I've been doing this for about four years. I find it to be a really uh, positive development experience and think that your developers will really like it. This is one of the cool developer experience moments with micro frontends.